space, the endless frontier. Someday in our future, explorers and adventurers will sail among these stars, discovering new worlds and possibly new civilizations, taking life where no life has been before and carrying the seeds of humanity to worlds without end. But how does this future come about? Who will lead this journey into tomorrow? Where will they be trained and how? Hello, I'm Marina Sirtis. You may know me as Councillor Diana Troy, a member of the crew of this great ship. On our television series, Star Trek The Next Generation, we live in a fictional future, one in which the great breakout of humanity from the cradle of Earth is distant history, a fait accompli. But the world of Star Trek is only fiction. There are no guarantees that the people of Earth can make it through the difficult times we face at the end of the 20th century. Yet we can succeed if we work together. One project going on right now is not only facing the challenge of space, it is helping people from cultures around the world learn how to live and work in harmony. It is called the International Space University, or ISU. ISU was founded in 1987 to provide a new type of education which would give those facing the challenges of space a global and multidisciplinary background at a level of excellence which could be understood and accepted around the world. Today, ISU is sponsored by over 130 major corporations and national agencies and more participate each year. From the first session in 1988, ISU has maintained a truly international character, rotating between some of the world's most prestigious academic institutions. Each session, an average of 135 graduate-level students attend ISU for the intensive 70-day program. They come from over 35 nations and are specialists in fields as diverse as computers, space geology, engineering and law. ISU combines not only students from different specialities, but also students from different nations, both giants in space and new entries to the space frontier, creating a dynamic mix which truly mirrors the future of human space activities. Oh, I've had a wonderful experience here at ISU. It's, uh, I've learned a lot about uh, life sciences uh, that I did not know before coming. I've also learned an awful lot about other engineering areas, which are really very important in the work that I do with life sciences, because you always have to interface with engineers who are developing hardware. Uh, beyond that, I've learned a lot about uh, the importance of interacting with people at various levels and uh, the international approach to that has probably been the most enlightening of all. We live together for 10 weeks and we know each other very very well. We are now in a very very interesting era because the, the Cold War of, has almost ended and I think this is now just now the time for the cooperation of the world and and the ISU can be a cut catalyst for this kind of activity. Realizing the daunting challenge of building a real university from scratch, the founders of ISU decided to develop the institution in stages. One of these founders, Todd Hawley, explains. ISU benefited from that early plan that we set up that allowed us to, to develop in a staged format. Uh, initially, under the guise of Space Generation Foundation, then following the founding conference at MIT as the ISU Project Inc. Uh, we were set up to run summer sessions, a fairly simple goal, but beginning to work in the millions of dollars a year level and get sponsors from over 100 different locations. Now what we're looking at is the next phase of ISU's evolution towards the permanent campus era. And as the ISU Organization Inc., our third incarnation, we're setting out on that uh, very, very exciting and I think a little bit uh, challenging frontier of education where we will be pushing the edge. This animation is a model of a large space station. It can be used to test out the theories of its designers and will enable them to prove their concept before actually bending metal, as it's called in the aerospace world. So too, the ISU summer sessions have been a model for the next stage of the ISU project the development of a full-time permanent campus system stretching around the globe. Plans call for the opening of the first campus by 1995. 
From its central campus, ISU will manage and supervise a network of affiliate and advanced campuses to be developed in association with the world's very best universities and research facilities. Each of these campuses will be a specialized working environment featuring advanced studies and research in each of the nine areas of study offered by ISU. As year-round operations commence, the ISU experience can be offered to greater numbers of students, while studies and projects can be pursued in much greater depth and detail. The centers will be staffed by world-renowned faculty who will be able to participate in ISU, often without leaving home. This breakthrough will be made possible by the ISU Net, an electronic voice, data, video communications and computing system unlike anything yet available. From his home in Sri Lanka, here is ISU's Chancellor, Arthur C. Clarke, inventor of the communication satellite and author of 2001, A Space Odyssey. This, of course, fits in ideally with the ISU's objectives because even though you want a permanent campus where people can meet face to face, interact, after they've done that, when they've dispersed, they can still interact in a way they could never have done if they hadn't met personally. So we get the best of both worlds. People will not have to gather together in large communities for long periods of time. They can meet occasionally, and then they can continue to interact, study, through their home consoles, wherever they are. Imagine a student or researcher needing information on a subject will merely press a few buttons and be face to face with the top experts in any field of study anywhere in the world. Conferences and classes can be attended by students and faculty at a fraction of the cost of physical travel. And students can interact with experts in over the shoulder experiments, although thousands of kilometers apart. ISU Net will feature a global electronic space library, providing ISU students access to the vast amount of space information and data which already exists and creating a clearinghouse for the huge amounts of new data we will gain as we move outward into space in the next century. ISU is working with top authorities from academia to develop the world's first MSS, or Master in Space Studies degree. In the 21st century, it will become a symbol of excellence recognized around the world, and those who have achieved it will certainly number among tomorrow's space pioneers. As a first step toward this dream, ISU has created a Founders Association, which is accepting grants and donations from visionary individuals and groups who want to be a part of this historic venture. With contributions of 1,000 US dollars or more, they are putting their money where their dreams are and taking a stand for that future. These critical donations are being used to plan and design the first ISU permanent campus. ISU's first president, George Van Rate, here we have one course that does not look at, let's call it damage control, but looks at creating the future, at making the future better for you, for your children, for the generations that come after us. So why not support it? Thanks to early contributions by Founders Association members, the university's campus planning is well underway. Curriculum, faculty requirements, academic standards, and the technologies needed to make it a world educational showcase are being discussed and developed today. The future is coming. It is up to us to make of it what we will. Too often we fall victim to songs of doom and warnings of limitations about what we as humans can do or dream. ISU stands in direct opposition to this philosophy, a place where caring, understanding, and a passion to know what is unknown brings out the best of what it means to be a human being. If ever in our history there was a time to build an institution like ISU, this is it. To date, over 500 students have passed through the doors of the ISU summer sessions. They entered as representatives of nations. They leave as representatives of our species. And ISU does represent us all. No matter where we are or what we do, the work of the graduates of ISU will affect our lives and those of our children as they assume the leadership of our space activities in the 21st century. But your help is needed. Your contribution to this great cause will help us give a home to what is best about the human race. The ISU is now training the engineers, the scientists, 
and the explorers who are going to tackle the immense challenge of exploring and then exploiting this new ocean and the continents scattered across it. The curtain is going up on this wonderful, awe-inspiring play, and the members of the ISU are going to be the actors. From a learning experience which stretches around the globe, ISU plans to actually become a true space university, building its first orbital research facilities. For ISU, the trek has just begun. Where it will lead, no one knows. But if it is to lead anywhere at all, ISU needs your help now, so that tomorrow we can give our children the future they deserve. Seldom in history does a chance come along to make a real difference. You have that chance now. Join us. Sorry. Okay, Arthur, at any moment you'd like to begin. Okay. Sitting here beside the Indian Ocean, the largest unexplored body of water on this planet, seems an appropriate place to talk about the International Space University, which is concerned with the next great age of exploration, the exploration of space. And the ISU is going to do that by training the engineers, scientists, and the explorers who, during the next century, are going to go out and explore first the moon, and then I'm sure Mars, the moons of Jupiter, and all the strange and exotic places 
even stranger than those on this planet, which are there waiting for the future of the human race to develop on a stage greater than anyone ever dreamed of in the past. Sitting here by the side of the Indian Ocean, the largest unexplored body of water on this planet, seems an appropriate place to talk about the International Space University, which is concerned with exploration on an even larger scale. The ocean of space is infinitely larger than that of the sea. The ISU is now training the engineers scientists and the explorers who are going to tackle the immense challenge of exploring and then exploiting this new ocean and the continents scattered across it. Mars, of course first the moon, then Mars, then probably the giant moons of Jupiter and Saturn, which are worlds in their own right. The enormous canvas, a huge stage on which the future drama of the human race is going to be played. And we're at the beginning, and the curtain is going up on this wonderful, awe-inspiring play, and the members of the ISU are going to be the actors. ask me why they should support the ISU as opposed to the innumerable other good causes repeating all the time. I'm reminded of the beginning of the great age of exploration when a very few people like Columbus you know, appealed to royal patrons and said, we think we want a good thing if you give us the money to build the ships and we'll open up a new world. And of course that's exactly what happened. What would our world be like now if Columbus hadn't received support then, or it was eventually when we would have discovered the new world. But this is a crucial time now that